Welcome to our lecture online. Our next example where we need to find the static coefficient of friction is comprised of a system of two blocks, a big block on the table and with a string attached to a smaller block that's trying to pull the big block to the right. So how do we find the coefficient of static friction required to keep the system from moving in the first place? Well, if we start using the equation F equals MA, of course we should write F net equals the total mass times acceleration, that's more appropriate in this, in this case. And then we realize that for the system not to move, the acceleration must be zero. We can then say that F net must be equal to zero. Now what is the net force acting on this system? Let's go ahead and draw some of the forces on there to see how we can find F net. Well, we have the force of gravity pulling down on the small block. And we have the force of gravity pulling down on the big block, that would be big mg. That would be the normal force pushing back from the surface, and the normal force would be equal to the force of gravity big mg. Oop, let's start over again on here. So that would be big mg like this. And then we have the friction force, which would act to the left because without friction, the whole system would accelerate to the right, so it's opposing that acceleration, and by definition, the friction force on the big block here is equal to the normal force times mu, and since the normal force is mg, we then know that the friction force would be equal to big mg times mu. And let's go ahead, call it static coefficient of friction. So now we can see that there are two forces that will affect acceleration. We have the small mg here, which tries to aid the acceleration, and we have the friction force, which opposes the acceleration. So by definition, the net force is all the forces aiding, minus all the forces opposing the acceleration. So in this case, that would be mg, which tries to make the system accelerate, minus the friction force, which is big mg, times the coefficient of static, coefficient of uh, static friction. Since we're looking for mu sub s, we can go ahead and move this to the other side and turn the equation around. That gives us mg mu sub s is equal to little mg. And then you realize that the g's cancel on both sides of the equation. And then finally, mu sub s can then be found by saying that it's equal to m divided by the big M. So the coefficient of static friction has to be at least as big as the ratio of the small mass divided by the big mass. Now, if they're equal to one another, then the coefficient of static friction would have to be one. If small m is, is smaller than big M, then the coefficient of static friction should be equal to the ratio of small m over big M, which is going to be less than one. And maybe what we should say here is that is the limiting case. So in other words, to keep the block from moving, we can say that mu sub s should be greater than or equal to m divided by big M, and that then answers the question, what's the minimum coefficient of static friction required to keep the system from moving? It must be at least, if not bigger than, the ratio of small m over big M. And that's how it's done.